this slide we will discuss about milling and paving milling of the surface may be required by the local authority as additional work after the removal and replacement of the wearing course surface for asphalt and paved roads requirement and specification for asphalt base course wearing course and tests should be followed as mentioned below there are number of points we will discuss one by one number 1 the width of milling and paving shall be as per specifications of municipality mot depending on municipalities where the width can be 1 meter or 3 meter at 5 cm depth of hot mix asphalt number 2 all dust and debris shall be removed from the surface to be asphalted the edges of the cut asphalt shall be sprayed with cut back rapid curing bitumen also known as rc2 and the whole of surface to be asphalted shall be sprayed with the cut back medium curing bitumen well known mc2 prime coat at the rate of 1.5 liter per meter cube meter square number 3 before asphalt laying the edges of the old asphalt shall recut or clean to expose a fresh clean surface number 4 the asphalt base course shall be laid 24 hours after the spring of the prime coat here we have some pictures as well of milling and paving machines while performing the milling and paving activity now the topic to be discussed is tests on asphalting tests on asphalting the testing on the delivered asphalt to the site is mandatory in order to ensure best reinstated roads all over kingdom the section below describes different testing criteria recommended by municipality and as per international standards the contractors have to ensure that the below tests are carried out by the approved laboratory and have passed on both field and lab exam there are some general requirements supply and testing of all necessary material should be carried out by individual lab on the contractor expenses compact compaction tests shall be performed on regular basis as specified by supervisor or to satisfy the authority regulating the highway involved a duplicate of record should be hand over to stc number 1 compaction test for sub base 100% mdp number 2 sieve analysis this is an analysis for material being used like sub base base coat and wearing coat number 3 california bearing ratio or cbr test this test or method is for assessing the strength of road construction material number 4 marshall test it determines the density wide ratio and stability flow value of hard mix asphalt number 5 asphalt temperature test this test actually asphalt material delivers to the site will be at minimum 139 degrees celsius number 6 the asphalt shall be reinstated as per municipality or mot standard and as required by the issued permit stc has the right to engage any third party municipality mot approved consultant to check and approve the quality of asphalting 
Number seven, all test documents and approvals shall be kept as part of PAD document. Now there is a picture showing on the right bottom some layers has been displayed. The top three layers which are black or asphalt layer and bottom two are subsoil or aggregate base. There is also picture on the left side showing the asphalt being laid. Sub base. There are number of points to be discussed. Number one. Maximum thickness of sub base layers are 150 mm or 15 centimeter compacted to 100% MPD according to Momra specification. Number two, supply and testing of all necessary sub-base material and compaction tests as required by the STC supervisor or relevant authorities is the responsibilities of contractor. Number three, sub-base shall consist of crushed aggregate sand, clay, and silt. These are all the materials in accordance with the following ASTM grading as detailed in table below. ASTM is an American standard and the table below shows all the minerals and the specifications of various elements. You may note in the table below there is a minimum CBR which should be 60%. Halt base course. There are number of checkpoints for halt base course which will be discussed in this slide. Number one. Before asphalt laying, the edges of old asphalt shall recut to expose a fresh clean surface. Number two. All dust or debris shall be removed from the surface of to be asphalted. The edges of cut asphalt shall be sprayed with cut back rapid curing bitumen or RC2 and the whole of the surface to be asphalted shall spread with the cut back medium curing bitumen also known as MC2 prime coat at the rate of 1.5 liter per meter square. Number three, the asphalt base course shall be laid 24 hours after the spray of prime coat. Number four, asphalt base course shall consist of mineral, aggregate and bituminous material in accordance with the following table showing in next slide number five fine aggregate shall consist of all material passing the number four sieve fine aggregate produced by crushing and retained by the number 10 sieve shall be examined for the presence of at least one mechanically fractured face such fractured material shall comprise at least 85 percent of the material passing sieve number four number six the sand equivalent of the total aggregate shall be a minimum of 50 percent as determined by aasho this is a standard 176 number seven Bituminous, bituminous asphalt cement shall be of grade 60 up to 70 penetration and the content shall be between 3 to 5 percent by weight. Number 8. The actual asphalt mix to be used shall be determined by the Marshall test and, and satisfy the following requirements. Number nine stability 500 kg minimum all base course continue 
flow two up to five mm. Void in total mix two up to seven percent. Void filled with asphalt fifty five up to seventy percent. Loss of moisture stability twenty five percent maximum. Installation of asphalt base course might be in single layer if less than 80 mm or 8 cm is required or it either be two layers if more than 8 cm or 80 mm is required if two stages are required a tack coat of rc2 shall be applied between layers at the rate of 0.5 liter per meter square the compaction required shall be 95% of the maximum density according to mix design table below also shows various mineral aggregate sieves versus astm gradings which are in inches also percentage of passing by weight there is some important point to note which is in red highlighted the preparation of asphalt cement shall involve heating all materials within a range of 135 degree up to 163 degree celsius all material heated more than 42 degree celsius above the maximum shall be subject to retest materials delivered to the site for placing shall be at a minimum temperature of 139 degree which is very important point to remember asphalt wearing course which also known as the top layer the hot mix there are number of checkpoints we will discuss one by one number 1 the marshall test shall be used to determine the mix which shall satisfy the following requirements stability it should be 750 kg minimum number 3 flow which should be 2 up to 5 mm void in total mix 2 up to 5% void filled with asphalt should be 70 up to 80% loss of marshall stability 25% maximum the compaction required shall be not less than 97% of the maximum density according to the marshall test it shall consist of mineral aggregate bitumen material in accordance with the table showing above the fine aggregate passing sieve number 4 and by number 10 shall contain not less than 90% with fractured and crash faces sand equivalent of the total aggregate shall be a minimum of 60% here you can also see table showing some mineral aggregates along with astm in inches and some values of passing percentage by weight this slide we will discuss about manhole and handhold installations manhole handhole installations all supplied manhole mini manhole handholes are prefabricated concrete structures which are locally manufactured from an approved supplier before executing the work the contractor shall get updated list of suppliers from stc general requirements there are number of checkpoints and we will discuss one by one number 1 in all feeder routes fiber optic cable use manhole with two cover handhold use manhole or two cover handhold in all civil network number 2 The span distance between manholes in primary 
or feeder road shall not exceed 300 meters. This is the responsibility of OSP designer. Number three, where ducts are terminated into the body of mini manhole or handhole, the manhole, the main duct bundles need to be 15 up to 25 centimeter inside the mini manhole or handhole body. Also, all ducts shall have no sharp edges. Number four, the contractor shall cap all duct entries to stop the entry of foreign materials between the time of the duct installation and installation of STC cables. Number five, concrete surface exposed to earth shall be coated with approved bitumen material. Number six, manhole handhole knockout windows has to be made close to a thin layer of concrete at the delivery time to site. The contractor has to break the required knockout window as per site condition and approved design. Number 7. The broken knockout window has to be filled with concrete epoxy from outside and inside the mini manhole handhold. Number 8. After mini manhole handhold installed, contractor shall ensure that the level of installed mini manhole handhold is aligned and leveled to the asphalt layer. Number 9. Gravel bed has to be applied before manhole handhold installation. The thickness of gravel bed shall be minimum of 15 cm. The gravel bed shall extend 20 cm to 30 cm outside the edges of mini manhole or handhole. Number 10. Soil compaction layer by layer has to be made surrounding the mini manhole or handhole. Number 11. Heavy truck has to be used for transporting any concrete structure from manufactured warehouse up to the site. In a diagram below, it shows the cross section of mini manhole handhole and you can see the thickness of the wall. This is for manhole. In this slide, we can see number of handholes and mini manholes cross sections. So this is a top view with extended cross section of single cover handhold, double cover handhold and mini manhole. So we will discuss one by one. Single cover handhold, the shape looks like a square. So it is 600 cm width and 600 cm is the length. So it's 60 cm and 60 cm wide handhold, single cover handhold, small or we can say a pulling handhold. Whereas double cover handhold, it's 60 cm width with 1250 cm length. The depth is same as single cover handhold. It is 80 cm or 800 mm. So this double cover handhold normally we use in our FTDH network. So we can place a splice closure inside. We have enough space. If we need to put more splice closure, then we need a bigger size of uh, handhold. And um, bigger than two cover handhold, we have a mini manhole. This one, this is the dimension is 1.2 meter uh, length and 1.2 meter is the width. It's the same shape of uh, a square with a depth up to 1.5 meter. So one thing common in all these three structures either this is single cover double cover or mini manhole or each wall of handhole or mini manhole we have two knockout windows so in single single cover you can see two knockout windows on each wall so total of eight knockout windows in double cover also two knockout windows on each wall so total of eight knockout windows 
in mini manhole also this these are the two knockout windows each wall so four sides of uh, mini manhole and mini and hand holes so means eight knockout windows with the dimension of 350 mm is the height and 150 mm is the width or 35 centi tall 15 centimeter is the width green panel installations number one contractor shall locate the location of handhold or mini manhole before start of any trench excavation the distance between the two manhole handholds shall be within the designated place with the flexibility of plus minus 2.5 meters to install in a proper place. Trunch excavation will start only after determine the manhole and handhole locations. Number two, contractor shall locate and excavate the area of handhole manhole up to required depth. The excavation acts as a part of test pit to determine if design handhole or mini manhole location is doable as per the soil type and existing utilities. Area shall be cleaned by removing stone or loose material. The total excavated pit volume should be minimum 20% extra of the manhole and hole volume. The bottom surface shall be leveled and compacted before installing manhole and hole with the minimum bedding layer of 150 mm or 15 cm gravel or crushed stone. Number 3. Once overall pit is clean, crane shall be used to lift manhole or handhole from lifting eyes by the ded dedicated lifting belt. Number 4. Manhole cover shall be leveled from the asphalt surface and should clean to be reopened easily. Number 5. Marker plates has to be used for marking mini manhole or handhole locations. Number six, the marker plate shall be placed at mini manhole or handhole on the opposite larger wall to be installed joint closure if applicable and in direction of the trunch at 10 cm from the cover seat concrete level. Number 7. The wall thickness of one cover and two cover and hole should not be less than 10 cm or 100 mm. However, for manhole the thickness shall not be less than 150 mm or 15 cm. For the bottom part it should not be less than 10 cm for our previous mention and whole manhole types. Last point, all manhole handhole located in asphalted area shall be equipped with heavy duty covers. For more information, you can refer to technical specification documentation. Brown field installations. Number one, pit preparation and existing duct cable clearance and marking has to be done before. Number two, if the existing path is a concrete one, then it has to be attached with the rope to the surface from both sides in order to create the form of mini manhole handhold clearly and ensure no duct damage. Number three, in case of upsizing, the desired wall should be breaking has to be removed slightly without damaging the existing infrastructure such as cable or splice closure, joint closure. Number four, 
ensure the location is free from debris and all other mainly sharp stones number 5 place the forming plates after painting them with oil to aid the removal after concrete curing number 6 pour the concrete as per the specified bed and wall thickness make sure the steel mesh is available at bottom and walls the concrete has to be within the specified norms of comprehensive compressive strength which is around 4000 psi pressure per square inch last point once structure is completed or the structure has been installed surround the open site with enough safety and make sure to close the manhole entry with the steel plate for pedestrian protection mini manhole covers number 1 mini manhole handhold covers shall be made with cast iron all covers should be used from approved stc supplier number 2 Loading capacity of manhole should be 40 ton. The mini manhole handhold cover shall be locked with unique head. Number three, STC logo shall be very visible on each cover. Also, the manufacturer name and HD, which means heavy duty, should be clearly marked on the cover. Number four. For manhole handhold accessories, please refer to the latest technical specification document. Mini manhole handhold frame and collars. Before delivering mini manhole to the site, manufacturer should ensure that collar has to be prepared. to accept the frame and cover after the initial curing period is complete frame as well as cover of the mini manhole has to be cast iron steel furthermore delivered prefabricated handhold which already has a pre-installed galvanized steel frame the thickness of this frame is 5 mm the frame shape has to have less welding parts well fixed to the handhold however for any brown field installation the below requirements has to be applied number 1 clean the surface then place the frame into position on bedding of fresh growth number 2 make the frame frame secure with mortar number 3 the final level of the frame and cover should be 5 to 10 mm above surrounding pavement below pictures you can see the cross section of top view of manhole which shows the manhole frame and mortar and on my right side there are some ladders manhole ladders are been shown with the table shows their specifications specification includes the length of the manhole ladder length and number of rungs for the safety reasons manhole ladder should be installed in a way that allows the technician to assess the manhole while facing the traffic installation of cabinet base in this slide we will discuss about where to install the cabinet base and how to install it fdt concrete base fiber distribution terminal or fdt shall preferably be installed near mosque or park or school there are some prerequisites for installation of cabinet base number 1 of 
official permission shall be obtained from concerned authority and shall be documented. Number two, drawings shall be prepared showing the exact location with full details of FTT and shall stamp from concerned authority as part of permission. Number three, original permission copy shall be submitted to STC for official record. Material quality and safety concern. Number one, FTT base shall be provided from an approved supplier with the valid type approval certificate. Number two, base should be crack and hole free. Hot dip steel, galvanized, stainless steel, anchor board must be there to fix the cabinet on top as per the approved technical specifications. Number three, an excavated pit has to have enough safety around and protection towards pedestrian. Number four, FDT wall shall be painted with bitumen for protection and painted with yellow color. Number five, no damage to be noticed for other existing utilities if ever met installer or technician has to inform STC inspector immediately. Number six, for illustration purpose, example of STC new installation practice, the cabinet is based shown in the figure below. In this picture, you can see the FDT cabinet base along with the protection post. MCM base site preparation. There are a number of steps to be followed for MCM base and cabinet installation. Starting from top left, MCM base installation. In the picture, it can be seen figure 66 that how the MCM base is lifted by a crane. MCM base and Skiko wall are installed in the designated pits. Both structures shall be placed over ground bed, gravel bed. Number two point, grounding rods shall be installed according to approved technical specification. The ground wire is secured to the ground rod using proper clump. Number three, the cable is coiled and left for Skiko to connect to the meter. All site preparation work associated with the MSM base shall be inspected and signed off as accept by STC inspector or project manager before installing the structure. Second picture shows waterproofing solution. Figure 67 is a correct practice for waterproof solution. After installation and leveling the MCM base to ground level, the base shall be tanked, painted for waterproof. Figure 68 shows correct or incorrect cable sealing practices with red cross means it's the incorrect method, while the green circle shows the correct method or practice for sealing the MCM. Figure 69 shows an example of MCM base and Skiko wall with site ID. Again, the green circle shows the proper way of installation, while the red cross shows improper or incorrect procedure or practice. Base lifting points are cut flush to the base surface where applicable. The spare cable void is filled with concrete and smoothed off. Number two point, site ID shall be stenciled to MCM base and Skiko wall. Figure 70 shows the fully installed and reinstated MCM protection post. Again, the green circle shows the proper or the correct practice to follow, whereas the red cross shows improper or incorrect practice, which 
should be avoided. Once the cabinet base is ready with all the three steps, then cabinet installation stage arrives. Cabinet is secured and anchored to the base. Cabinet interface with the base is sealed and water repels leak. Power meter base. There are number of checkpoints we will discuss one by one in this slide. Number one. The concrete base for electrical supply panel shall be positioned to the right side of electronic cabinet. We call it ensign or ran and connected to the cabinet base by 60 mm duct. Skiko wall base is equipped with two ducts of 60 mm outer diameter. The first duct is accommodating the supply power cable to electrical switch board while the second duct is connected to the MSAN base. Number 3. For more details about dimension of Skiko wall base, please refer to the latest technical specification document. Earthing and bonding. There are two different methods or earthing system, one for MSAN and one for metallic FTT. The picture shows on our left side showing the earthing system for MSAN while the picture on the right shows earthing, earthing system for metallic FDT. Again number of checkpoints we will discuss one by one. All metallic cabinets shall be grounded according to the applicable codes and standards. Resistance to the ground of earth system shall not exceed 5 ohms. In case of low resistance soil condition, there are other options for improving conductivity including adding multiple electrodes in parallel and increasing the driven depth of the electrodes. If adding more than one electrode in parallel, the electrodes shall be driven into the earth at distance not less than 1.83 meter to avoid ground potential rise effect. Number 5. For MSAN, there shall be a minimum of 4 earthing rods which are interconnected by 16 mm earthing strand wire to form a ring. This ring is connected to the cabinet shell and earthing bus bar 1. See figure 72. Number 6. Applicable core standards and regulations may require that grounding or earthing conductors and bonding jumpers be connected by exothermic welding, listed pressure connectors, listed clumps or other listed means. Connection devices or fitting that depends solely on solar cells on solder shall not be used. Number seven. For metallic FDT cabinet, there shall be a minimum of two earthing rods which are connected in parallel. These rods are connected to the shell of the cabinet as shown in figure 73. Installation of protection post and U-guard. In this slide, we will discuss about some indoor pathways with their size and installation considerations. Indoor pathways. For exchange FTTM or GSM sites, pathways shall be installed from the entrance facility to the equipment room. Pathways include the following ducts, conduits, cable trays. Cable tray fittings and accessories used for changing the direction or size of a cable tray include elbow reducers, crossovers or T's. The accessory used with cable trays include covers, fold down devices, dropouts, conduit adapters, dividers. Now we will discuss about size and installation consideration. Size considerations. The size of pathway shall be considered to accommodate a minimum fill ratio of 40% initially. In addition to the in addition to the initial requirement to have a fill ratio of 40%, there shall be a deduction of 50% for each band 
along the pathway according to the following formula conduit field d rating is equal to conduit cross section area multiplied by 1 minus number of conduit bands multiplied by 0.15 multiplied by 0.4 divided by cable cross section area installation considerations for sealing pathways allow for a minimum of 75 mm of clear vertical space above girder towards and cables 300 mm of clear vertical space above the tray or raceway for overhead sealing cable tray or raceway system for assess floor pathways allow a minimum of 50 mm or 2 inch of free space should exist between the top of the cable tray side row side rails and the underside of the stringers in this slide we will talk about protection posts and their usage in order to protect stc network elements such as ftt tbs the contractor has to ensure that the protection posts and steel galvanized u guards are in place protection post m sand base and cabinet installation follows the following procedure number 1 protection post consists of 150 mm or 300 mm steel duct which is filled with concrete number 2 steel duct shall be clean and free from rust painted with corrosion resistant primer the final coat of yellow black color shall comply with the approved technical specification documents number 3 the residual concrete at the top of the protection post shall be smoothened to prevent injuries number 4 protection post of 150 mm are used in normal streets and sub roads where the accident risks are minimal number 5 protection post of 300 mm are used in highways main roads and corners where there is more chances or probability for accident number 6 number of protection post may vary depending on the site condition the number of posts shall be agreed with stc representative after assessing the site requirements number 7 For FTTs, there are four protection posts installed as shown in figures 74 and 75. For 150 mm protection post, the height is 1.2 meter above ground, 800 mm below ground, with a concrete base of 400 cross 400 mm as shown in figure 76. For 300 mm protection post, the height is 1.2 meter or 1200 mm above ground 800 mm below ground with a concrete base of 600 cross 600 mm as shown in figure 77 in this slide we will talk about u guards u guards shall be installed on customer wall to provide extra protection for the drop ducts as shown in figure 78 Contractor should ensure that the maximum height of the terminated drop duct on the customer premises wall doesn't exceed 1.5 meter from the ground level. Gaps between U guard and customer premises wall are not acceptable. U guard clamps shall be secured, securely fixed with aluminium screws. Minimum number of clamps are three, as shown in figure. in case of indoor tb odb osb make a access hole through the outer wall for cable entry the cable shall be housed in galvanized conduit up to the access hole the customer is responsible for installing the internal containments pathways and spaces within his premises all internal containments within the customer boundary shall be installed according to stc standards and specifications the customer shall obtain the approval of stc engineer in this regard stc technician is responsible for the installation of tb or dbosb in the agreed location
fold handling and installation. In this slide, we will talk about fold handling and how to install it. Wooden pole inspection before planting. This is to check the correct type of pole supplied, length and thickness, as well as its integrity. Ensure that all poles are fitted with end plates and strapping at both ends. The pole should never be offloaded and stacked on the ground for long period, as this could cause damage to the poles as well as the environment. Hammer test. Existing pole, wrap the pole sharply with the hammer, weight about 1 kg, starting near the ground line, then continuous towards around the pole to a height of approximate 1.5 meter. The hammer will produce a clear sound and rebound sharply when striking sound wood. Decay area will be indicated by a dull sound or a less pronounced hammer rebound. Pole erection, PPE, personal protection equipment for pole handling, number one, safety boots with steel cap, gloves, number two, protective clothing with long sleeves, hard hat, number three, shoulder pads. Transportation of poles, for one pole, must never exceed the 0.5 meter vehicle overhang and must have a red flag secured on the overhanging head. For two poles that are loaded onto a pole carrier must be secured to ensure that the cargo does not move while it is in transit. Pole offloading procedure. Ensure that the removal of any one pole will not cause shifting or rolling of any of the remaining poles. Step 1. Unfasten the pole. Step 2. Slide one pole at a time towards the rear end of the vehicle. When the pole reaches its equilibrium point, the person on the vehicle must raise their end slowly. Number 4. The persons on the ground slowly pull the pole until one meter of it is left on the back of the vehicle bed. Number 5. The person on the ground receives the pole and gently place it on the ground. Number 6. A pole must never be dropped on the ground as this could damage the pole or cause injury to the team members. Pole digging tools. There are table shows different types of poles as per the length starting from 7 meter up to 11 meter plus and how to handle the poles either with number of persons or with mechanical aid. Figure 79 shows the hole digging tool. Table 19 shows the hole digging length as per the length of pole. For example, a pole less than 6 meter has to be planted in depth 0.9 meter and pole 7 to 8 meter has to be planted underground 1.2 meter and pole length more than 9 meter has to be planted underground 1.5 meter. The tools provided for hole digging includes picks, showers, earth augers, crowbars, drills, and sledgehammer. The tools to be used for any particular work are determined predominantly by soil condition. On large projects and weather ground condition permits, hydraulically powered earth augers can be used. It looks much like a corkscrew and produces extremely clean holes. In extreme rocky conditions, their holes cannot be excavated to the specified depth 
an arrangement between contractor and client can be reached for course to be set in concrete. Pole planting work practice. Number one, avoid dongas, culverts, drain, or water channels. Avoid obstructing private roads and entrances. Number seven, where the ground is very soft, poles may be planted 300 mm deeper than specified but only if the necessary vertical clearance is maintained. Number eight, ensure that all holes necessary for pole dress say are drilled before to erection. Number nine, maintain a distance of at least one meter from trigged beacons and stations. Number 10, the principle to be followed in all cases that neither stays nor poles are to be planted where they are likely to cause obstruction or to be dangerous to users of the road or where they are likely to interfere with ordinary road maintenance such as clearing and trimming of edges of road or the cutting of drains, cutters, etc. Number 11. In railway reserves, the poles should be located as close as possible to the boundary channels. Number 12. To ensure the stability of electric holes, erected poles, approved type backfilling is to be used. Number 12. The compaction level for the layered backfill is to be 98% of standard compaction with 12% optimum moisture content, soil compaction and density tests. Number 13. Backfilling should be ramp compacted every 150 mm thick to ground line and shall fill the hole. The 350 mm below ground level to the actual ground level should be filled with lamy type soil to facilitate future inspection. Number 14. Poles for pole mounted distributions substations must be backfilled as specified in for pole mounted distribution substation construction. Type of stays. In this slide we will talk about different type of stays. Number one, terminal stays. Terminal stay is provided with the root starts and ends. This stay must be on the side of the pole opposite to the direction of the cable route. Installed at every 30th pole along the route or spaced alternatively as per specifications. Line stays must be installed on poles either side of rivers or road crossing where normal span length are exceeded. Wind stays and angle stays. Wind stays are used to stabilize a cable route against wind. Fitted at 90 degree against the direction of the cable road and on either side of a pole. Angle stays are used to counteract to change in direction of the cable road by more than 15 degree or as per client specification. Stay guards. Stay guards painted black and white bands or equivalent must be fitted on all stays potentially exposed to pedestrian and or vehicles. Struts. Struts can be used as an alternative to where stay create traffic hazards, block road or where a property owner is subject to the fitting of a stay. Struts must be installed on the opposite side of the pole to where the ang angle stay would have been fitted to counteract cable strains. In the pictures, there are different types of stays shown. Stay holes. The cross section of hole shall be confined to the smallest size necessary to accommodate the stay plate. The depth of stay holes shall be 1.5 meter or at such a depth where the unthreaded portion of the stay rod 
transport roads by no more than 25 mm above the ground level. Stray rods without plates may be used where solid rock is encountered. The stray rod is now inserted in a hole drilled into the rock and secured with cement. In difficult to dig ground condition, shallower holes are allowed, subject to approval and shall then be backfilled using concrete. The spread is the distance from the foot of the pole to the point to where the stay enters the ground. The height is the distance from the ground to the pole attachment. Terminals and line stays has a spread height ratio of 1 into 1. Termination of stay wire to pole or cross head. Wrap the top preformed make off without overlapping around the pole twice at the prescribed height with ends meeting. Twist the top of the preformed make off around the stay wire. Cut the stay wire at the correct length to ensure that the proper spread height ratio is maintained. Place the bottom of the preformed make off through the cross head eye. Then pull tight and cut the suspension wire in line with the cross head and twist the bottom preformed make off around the stay wire. Ensure that the cross head is set to the outermost of the stay rod. Marking and identification. Marking and identification. In this slide, we will talk about different marking identification procedure. Marking plates are key parts of network construction and implementation of all STC network. Refer to the approved technical specification document for labeling plates. Number one, marking and identification of manhole handhole. Marker plates or marker plates shall be installed on inside of manhole neck next to end the same level as the ladder support. 150 mm from the top of the manhole collar for handhole, the marker plate shall be installed inside 50 mm below the cover for both manhole hand and handholes. The marker plate shall be installed on inside wall which allows the technician to face the traffic while reading the marker plate. The marker player shall carry, carry the following information, which are exchange name, manhole, handhole number, year of placing. Number two, marking and identification of unterminated ducts. Unterminated ducts or poke outs shall be identified using marking plate, which is fixed on the nearest wall or a dedicated location service wire, LSW post. In case of fixing the marker plate on permanent wall, the fixing height shall be 500 mm above ground level. The marker plate shall carry the following information. Number one, type number of ducts, station number in case of fixing on marking post, both vertical and horizontal distance from the mark from the poke out in case of fixing the marking plate on the wall. Number three. Marking and identification of FDT or MSAN cabinet. Marking plate for FDT shall be placed on the concrete base. The marker plate shall show the following information. CLLI code, which is generated by system, by designer, exchange code or site number, and FDT or MSAN cabina number. Civil work acceptance. Quality Assurance Civil Work Acceptance or Quality Assurance On the completion of assigned work, the contractor shall ensure to fulfill civil work acceptance requirements as per PAD procedure guideline. This section will provide the required guidance for the site supervisor to assure a good quality of work to be followed and the contractor to adhere the best practice for implementation. General requirement 
Below checklist will be as guidance along with the field inspection checklist for STC representative to conduct and ensure the installation quality. The contractor shall submit all variation to construction drawing for inclusion on as built STC network drawing. It is STC contractor's responsibility to forward handwritten markups of hard copy drawings or detail all changes and necessary installation information are returned return to the designer within five working days of completion to ensure the final as built drawings are correct thank you very much for watching this civil implementation training guide